It's been a week since Honkai Star Rail released, basically. Yes, on the 26th, we were graced with Honkai Star Rail, and I'm very happy about that. You know, it, it's, it's been so much fun, at least for me, and so many others. And I'm very, very happy to say that the perception seems to have changed from this, oh, is it going to be as good as Genshin 2? Holy crap, this is amazing. Everyone seems to be enjoying it. So today, I kind of wanted to take the time to really talk about my experience with Honkai Star Rail uh, during this whole, you know, release and even during my closed beta session. Now, there are going to be things that I can't entirely talk about, obviously, because I, I still have certain stuff that hasn't been released in this game. You know, you'll you'll find out soon. But I kind of want to talk about my experience, how I feel about it and some changes that I'm very, very happy to see come to the game since it's released. But before we get into that, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified of when the next Honkai Star Rail video comes out. And of course, leave a comment. We'd love to hear you guys' opinions. But without any further delay, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, as you can see here, I have my game pulled up and honestly, I have been slacking. I'm only level 28 as of this recording. So go men to everybody out there who expect me to be level like 50 already. Um, it's It's been a rough week for me to actually play the game, but we still got to play and I'm very, very excited with how this changed. First off, the interface is fantastic. I love how the interface is comparatively, but it does feel a little bit cluttered since there's so much going on. You could probably honestly uh, kind of shrink these two things down, the store and the tra uh, travel log, and maybe that'll shrinkage the whole, or bring that whole thing up. We would still have one like off there, but that's a very small gripe. I can get over that. You could just use your scroll wheel. Scroll wheel, scroll wheel. There we go. Tyster can't words today. Now, one thing is that we didn't have the profile back in closed beta. And honestly, I love the fact that we get all these little icons. Um, this one was my favorite for the longest time, but I went ahead with the welt one because I thought this welt one that I got from the battle pass uh, just kind of matched me. I really dig it, so. But yes, what's really cool also is that you have a support character, which a lot of games actually use this system where there's support characters, like uh, before Shutdown Princess Connect, Redive had this, uh, Dokkan Battle, or Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle for a lot of people, uh, has this system where you could use a friend's thing. Um, but what's really cool is actually you get rewarded for having a character that people can use. I actually just withdrew my rewards before this, but you get credits for it. And it's not a lot of credits, but you know, it's free money, basically, it, or free currency for in-game, so. Um, but yeah, I really do dig that. I think it's a really wonderful thing. Plus, you get to show off three of your companions. Now, Getchen does have where you could show off eight, but I don't think you need to show off all eight. Three is perfectly fine. Now, let's go ahead and dive into some of the other stuff really quick. Now, what I find funny is that while this layout seems... A, a lot slicker. It does seem a little bit disorganized like we talked about, but the friends list is really nice. Like you get to see their support character that they have out there. Like that's what's really cool. And then you can just click on it right from the get go and you could actually look into it. Um, now that we're on this, this is actually kind of cool. So you could go up to five star artifacts and originally, if I remember correctly, when you had the, the interface was more like sideways. It didn't have this whole like circle thing with it. It was a sideways system that only works sideways. And you would have, you could go up to four pieces of like, let's say this one, which is the genius of brilliant stars. Um, and then the extra two pieces were a part of those same sets, but they were very generic pictures if I remember correctly, but they have it switched to where you can only go up to a four piece set of these plus a two set of another uh, specific set of like, um, how, how you say it? Uh, relics. Der, what, what am I thinking? Um, but these relics, you could have like a headband and I think it's a ring. Um, but yeah, these actually like, it, it makes it a little bit better and it gives you a little bit more utility. You're not stuck with just, uh, one set's effect. You actually do get at least, at least two sets, upward to three sets different effects. So that's really, really cool. The tracing system, uh, is actually really cool in the sense of like, I don't remember this too much in closed beta one. I do believe it was there, but it wasn't as intricate as this. And it's really cool to see how you could develop the characters uh, with this. It seems very like it really plays into like 
Final Fantasy in this sense, at least for me, like how they used to do uh, Final Fantasy X system for uh, upgrading your characters. The light cone system has taken place instead of Genshin's weapon system, which I think is a wonderful thing because these characters need to have their own specific weapons. I think that that's what's most important. Now, granted, you don't need the light cones to like really make the characters shine. Like you don't need the five star light cones to make every character great. These work just fine. Now, this is a five star, so don't worry about that. Uh, this is actually the perfect five star uh, light cone and or at least in some people's eyes, for Sealy. And of course, the character designs are really, really good. I feel like they went all out for these designs. There hasn't been much change to Sealy. Uh, and even in her kit wise, there hasn't been that much of a change to her. So I'm very, very happy with that. Um, so yeah, I think that ultimately this friend system, this is what we were talking about before I got sidetracked. But um, I like this friend system. I think it's really nice and slick and it works really well. I wish they wouldn't put a cap on how many friends you could have, but hey, I understand. Now, travel log, pretty simple is your events tab, which I'm gonna claim the last little bit of these. I gotta make a, I gotta make a thingy for that. I'm gonna wait uh, to do that. I gotta make a short. Um, but you do have the trailblazing will, which is, you know, get to 35 and you get this. I don't think, yeah, this is a permanent thing. So you get free summons permanently. You get up to 40 free summons on the standard banner, which is fantastic. They have a showcase just like uh, Genshin Impact does. And Simulated Universe is another event. Uh, people have kind of compared it to uh, um, Spiral Abyss. I wouldn't even say that. I think that it's more like, uh, it's more brand new than anything. Uh, Forgotten Hall, if you know that, that's another event that's here, um, is more like Spiral Abyss. Well, this is just a different side event. And I like it. A lot of people like it actually. And I've even seen people like, to, like one of my friends, Rami, he actually could have autoed the entire battle for World 6. And World 6 is pretty difficult, at least in this stage right now. Not to say that it's too easy, but because of how the buffs work, if you get a certain type of buff because of RNG, you're really set, especially if you go through preservation for that uh, World 6, you're set in stone, depending on what characters you have. Now, this message system is really cool too. You can actually talk, to, or in essence, talk to characters every single day. Like, see how March 7th gave me a sticker, you there? Uh, did you lock yourself out? Haha. -ha. Because, look at, look at this March 7th. Look at there, we caught her. But what's really cool is you could get out of it and you could come back to it later if you want, which is really dope. So, uh, Nameless Honor, pretty much self explanatory. It's the battle pass. So, battle pass is dope. Get the battle pass. I think it's I think it's kind of worth right now. Uh, synthesize uh, is basically your cooking, and you don't need to go to a bot like a fire to do it. You can just do it at any time. I think that's great. I think that Genshin should have implemented that in the first place without having to like use the like portable one. Like just make this a thing. Now, granted, this kind of does make the thing or the uh, interface right here a little cluttered, but I digress. I think that this is perfect. I don't think that you need to have the portable thing to just click on, equip, set it down, go and do it. Don't like that. Achievements, uh, pretty straightforward. It's an achievement section. I like the look of this one. And then when you click on it, it's pretty big. It's not, I think that this is actually the right amount of uh, like, I would say te like big text in my opinion. So pretty cool, like that. Um, I know this is kind of getting a little bit nitpicky on certain things, but we're going to kind of go forward. Character section, uh, just like Genshin Impact, pretty simple. Um, I like a lot of the characters, to be quite honest. A lot of them are really good. Uh, Seelie's my go-to right now. Seelie, my girl. And then Bailu is such a great healer. We've talked about her in the past. So really, really cool. Now, the warps are the same exact thing. You know, pretty standard to Genshin Impact. I've got 21 saved for Jing Yuan. I cannot wait. Now, let's kind of skip over. We've got the industrial guide here, which is the same thing as missions. I like the way that they did the daily missions. I think this is a lot better than doing four commissions because it's pretty simple. You could get, you know, like this, you can get done in one. You could use two techniques right out the get go. You could get these two done at the same time and boom, you're done with your dailies. 
The interface in general for it as well is really easy to navigate. Like here's your book and then you have your dailies right there. And then right here, it goes over your uh, like small event type stuff, Echoes of War, which I, I do need to make sure that I do again because uh, today was weekly reset, I think. So I got to get those done. But yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward on those. Data bank, same as always. You can look at your characters and all that stuff from here, which is really neat. Uh, I need Ting Yun. I need her so much. But what's really cool also is it has it separated by the paths too. So you could see like, oh, hey, there's only two abundance, which is Natasha and Bailu. You know, so it's really cool. You can look at your relics, your terms, uh, all the different Aeons. Uh, it's, it's just really sick how they went about that. And then of course you got missions, which is your like, overall missions they separate these in four different types you have your trailblazer missions your companion missions your daily missions which you only get one a day and adventure missions which are your side quests um the only thing that i don't like about the daily mission is that it always seems like for me the last four days i've been going to the same person for the daily mission i don't like that i think that's a little bit it doesn't give you variety and it feels like you're just doing the same thing over and over again so Inventory pretty straightforward, uh, exactly like Genshin Impact in this sense, in essence, but a lot less stuff going on. But of course, that can be fixed. Um, gameplay wise, game plays so freaking well, man. Like, it's super easy. You get like, let's go into a battle here real quick. Uh, you could get amb or, or you could get weakness breaks or ambushes. This helps really with the team. You could look at the side. The side's very slick about how your teams work. If you look at how I move right here, you could look at your ultimates. You can kind of pre-plan them. Like if I want to use Seelie right here, boom. And the ultimates are so good. The ultimates look so freaking dope. Like they did so well in the animations. One of the biggest things I will say about um, the game too is in Genshin, the thing I got upset about was that there was one major cutscene, maybe two, per Archon Quest. It seems more like now you have more, more cutscenes. And they're not just BS cutscenes, they're quality. The Like, for those who have gotten there yet, the final battle with uh, Kokolia, aka Coca-Cola, you get some really awesome cutscenes in that like an actual like triple a title game so they pulled out all the stops when it comes to the animation so they did really good and honestly the interfaces are really easy to navigate in my personal opinion they're very easy to understand they give you a little bit of customary uh stuff with this hmm well yeah one or while i switch some of the things that i really like about this game is just its ability to bring in people. And what I say by that is like, I think that honestly in my Discord, nobody has said a bad thing about Honkai Star Rail. Now granted, you could say like, oh yeah, being able to uh, auto battle the world six of simulated or simulated universe, however you want, simulated universe, however you want to call it, is a bad thing. But everyone's like laughing and having fun with it. That's what I think is the best thing about Honkai Star Rail right now is that people are having fun with it. It's a breath of fresh air and it feels like Hoyoverse took a lot of consideration from the players and put it into the game. Now, I will say that yes, it's a gacha game. It's predatory, but Honkai Star Rail feels like it's one of the better free to play games out there. You can free to play this game. Fire Preservation Trailblazer is one of the best characters in the game. And the four stars that you get, like Ting Yun, uh, freaking Asta. Asta you get for free. Herda can do some good stuff too. Hook you can get for free, I believe, at some point. Natasha you get for free, which is a great healer. Dan Hing does really, really well. March 7th is a defensive juggernaut in some cases. Honestly, it feels as though people were writing off this game because of how Genshin was at the start, but don't realize that Honkai Impact 3rd transitioning to Genshin Impact was going to be difficult. It was going to be a difficult time because Hoyoverse was still getting its bearings. Honkai Impact 3rd was huge, 
but not huge, huge. Genshin Impact was huge, huge. So how could Hoyoverse follow up Genshin Impact? Well, take a lot of consideration from the content creators, take a lot of consideration from the players, and implement it. Now, I'm not saying that Honkai Star Rail is the perfect Hoyoverse game. But right now, I think it's gonna be more than just the flavor of the week. And it seems so, because a lot of creators are starting to see that the speculation of Honkai Star Rail being bad was pretty far off. Honkai Star Rail is a fantastic game in my personal opinion. And yes, I might be a little biased because I, you know, stream and make Hoyoverse content. But I even went into this thinking that closed beta one was a precursor to how they were going to nerf this game. They didn't nerf it. At least in my opinion, they didn't. They made it way better. So honestly, if you have not tried Honkai Star Rail and you want me to be as sincere as I humanly possibly can, if you're not into gacha games, don't go for Honkai Star Rail. But if you like RPGs and you don't want to focus on the gacha aspect of it, Honkai Star Rail captures that so well. Yes, you do summon for new characters, but you don't have to buy into the game. Honkai Star Rail to, to me is pretty free to play friendly. I would encourage everybody. And I, I, I will say this, I had a lot of friends who were skeptical or skeptical who would message me constantly and say, are you scared of how bad Honkai Star Rail is gonna be? And I told them, no. I have full faith that Honkai Star Rail is going to be a fantastic game. And it did not disappoint. So overall, Honkai Star Rail gets an 8 out of 10 for me. They did so good. And we're only looking to the stars to see how good it's going to get. Hop on board the Astral Express at least once and tell me if you like the game. Would love to hear you guys' opinions in the comments down below. Guys, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to entertain you. We will be back again with another Hawkeye Star Rail video soon. And as always, we will catch you guys in the next video. Please take care, be safe, y'all.